So, you're probably here wondering, how does one play the Pyro class in Team Fortress 2? Well, fellas, maybe, 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 uh, maybe ladies and all. I'm going to show you how to play this wonderful arsonist in Team Fortress 2. I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. So, uh, if you watch this video, then, uh, you, you'll become, you'll become this. Might not actually look like this, but you, you get what I'm saying. Basically, you'll become a pyro player. So let's, let's just jump into it. <laughs> So, first of all, you'll want to know your weapons. This is a nice selection of the Pyro's primary weapons. We have the standard flamethrower, serve very different purposes within the Pyro's arsenal. But the essential thing is, these have 200 ammo. It costs around 25 to air blast, 50 if you're using the back burner. And you deal fire damage plus burn damage and afterburn. So with the standard flamethrower, you know, afterburn reduces medigun healing and resist shield effects, and the alt fire releases a blast of air that pushes enemies and projectiles, and also extinguishes teammates that are on fire. Back burner, 100% critical hit from behind, extinguishing teammates restores your own health, but there is a 150% air blast cost, meaning you use a lot more ammo air blasting than you usually would. Now the degreaser on the other hand, moving on to the degreaser, the weapon holsters and deploys faster, extinction teammates also reduces your health, there's a 66% penalty on afterburn, and a bit of an air blast cost. Not as much as the degreaser though, not as much as the pack burner though. The dra dragon's fury is different to most flamethrowers, as it launches a fast moving projectile that briefly ignites enemies instead of using a just like you hold down it as a continuous fire blast and obviously alt fire also air blasts you hit an enemy while they're on fire you deal 300% more damage and because the pyro's main damage type is fire it's a very powerful weapon moving on to the secondary weapons so you've got a lot more to choose from so you've got the reserve shooter this builds on the shotgun which you get by default Mini crits targets launched by airborne attacks, so whether you blast them, whether they're flying, whether they get blown higher, if you hit them in midair they do a lot more, they do a bit more damage. The weapon deploys faster but has a smaller clip size than the regular shotgun. The gas passer recharges over time and then when you throw it, it gives them some sort of gas effect similar to a Girati. And this ignites all players when they take damage, even pyros. So this is a good way to deal afterburn damage on some pyros, even though they are usually flame resistant. The man melter. This has a faster projectile, doesn't require ammo, and will extinguish teammates when you alt click. You also get some crits from doing that. However, there are no random crits when you're using this. The detonator. 100% mini crits versus burning players. However, there is a damage penalty of 25% and you deal 50% damage to self when you use the, uh, when you try to detonate a jump and the alt, fly, alt fire detonates the flare, so it has a little explosion. El Scorcho is what I've called my Scorch Shot. 100% mini crits versus burning players. Flare knocks back target on hit and explodes when it hits the ground. Increase knockback on burning players. However, there is a 35% damage penalty and a 35% self damage force. The Thermal Thruster just lets you fly. Well, not exactly fly, but jump further, essentially. The Panic Attack has 50% bullets per shot. The weapon deploys 50% faster and fires a wide fixed shot pattern. However, there's a 20% damage penalty, and because of the way this fires, you have to hold down your mouse button to charge it, to load it, and then as soon as you release that, it just unloads a barrage of shots. We then have the Flare Gun. This is just 100% critical hit versus burning players. And finally we've gone to melee weapons. So these all build on the basic fire axe, the extinguisher, mini crits burning targets and extinguishes them, 
damage increases based on remaining duration of afterburn. So if someone's been just puffed and you bring out the extinguisher, you do more damage. Killing blows on burning players grants a speed boost. However, there is a 33% damage penalty, no random crits, and this weapon holsters 35% faster. Slower even, so it's a slow draw and a slow put away. The back scratcher, this does 25% more damage and you get more health from health packs. However, you get less health from healers like medics. The sledgehammer does 100% damage versus buildings. You can remove sappers with it, however, you do less damage to players. Third degree, all players connected via medigun beams are hit. So, say you're against a heavy medic and you hit them with a third degree, the medic also takes damage. The hot hand, you gain a speed boost when you hit an enemy player, however, you do 20% less damage. And it's kind of similar to the um, Holy Mackerel, where it takes more than one hit to kill a player. The Postal Pummeler, mini crits burning targets and extinguishes them. Damage increases. It's essentially a reskin of the Extinguisher. The Shotman Volcano Fragment, on hit, target is engulfed in flames, however you do 20% less damage. The Neon Annihilator, removes sappers, 100% crits versus wet players. No random crits and minus 20% damage versus players. The power jack, 15% faster move speed on wearer, 25 health restored on kill, but you uh, take 20% more damage when using it. And that's all the weapons. So you want to pick your kit depending on what you want to do. If you want to be an ambush class like the pyro should be, uh, you probably want to go with the back burner if you're going to be behind the enemies a lot. However, if you want to just go in cause a lot of damage, the flog is very good for that as you build crits by damaging players and then when you have the uh, oomph bar full and you right click you do you have crits for about five seconds if you want to do a lot of damage then the dragon fury is your best bet especially if you team up with another pyro that one goes around with, say a normal flame that are burning players and then you come out with their the dragon fury and just hit them for crits for the purposes of this video i'm just going to be running a stock loadout just to show you how to play pyro if you've just gotten into the game obviously you may have unlocked some weapons but this the stock loadout is probably one of the best loadouts you could be using obviously there are some weapons which are just slight upgrades of stock and it really depends how you want to play the game this is the basic pyro loadout i'm going to show how to use it effectively i hope so really what you want to be doing is you want to be focusing on your flamethrower damage as that is your main damage output as pyro i know the memes is going around saying just wm1 and while that is a viable strategy unfortunately there are still better ways to go about it for example right, say you're against a soldier right he's gonna have his rocket launcher and you're gonna have your flamethrower now if this soldier is, is a good soldier he's probably gonna whip out his shotgun that's when you can whip out your shotgun and you can have a little shotgun duel as soon as you switch back to rocket launcher though you want to switch back to your flamethrower as he's gonna probably rocket you which you can then air blast with your alt fire Okay, 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 we take those, we take those, holy shit. That is the main source of your damage, you're not really going to be using your melee weapon most of the time. That's why you should, that's why I recommend switching to a weapon that destroys sappers, such as the Neon Annihilator if you're on 2-4, or the uh, Home Wrecker if you're just on a normal, regular map. If there's a map with water, and players can go in the water, the Neon Annihilator is your best bet as a melee weapon if you want to do some pyro sharking. So yeah, we're just going to go about place a pyro and show you uh, the ropes, I guess. I'm, I'm by no means a pro player at the pyro, it's just the class I've had the most time in and the class I'm most skilled at. People often say the pyro requires no skill, but there's more skill to it than just walking around pressing M1. While editing this video, I decided that I will split it into a multi-part series, mainly because the gameplay included would have pushed this video to like a 20 minute mark, and I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. I want it to be easy to digest, so this episode is just going to be focusing on weapons and what they can do, and then the next episode will be how you can utilize these weapons and tactics you can play, use to play as Pyro effectively. <laughs> So yeah, that'll be out in the next few days, I hope. Hey, oh, uh, uh, I've been up for like two hours, two hours. 
Yo, bitch can view, took a few showers. Few showers. I don't buy, I just money dance. Yeah. That wristwatch costs a hundred grand.